Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. How you guys doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. And how you guys doing? How you guys been lately? Uh, you know what guys, I've been better because um, currently, you know, I'm uh, going insane a little bit. You know, I'm just trying to survive through the Russian uh, financial crisis right now and through the Russian currency crash. And I'm just trying to not go insane from this anxiety that I feel every day from the fact that all of my savings are burning in front of my eyes. So you know guys, it's a lot of fun living in Russia. But you know what guys, no matter what, I will keep making these videos for you guys and today we have a great one we have actually another one of these Russian Q&A videos, which is basically me going on Twitter and asking you guys if you have any questions about Russia or any personal questions to me. So I'm going to be reacting to the most interesting questions you guys asked in this video. And also, if you want to appear in one of the future episodes of this series, then uh, make sure to follow my Twitter and ask me a question on that when I announce it. So uh, go over and follow it. Do it! And let's get into it. First question from Matthew here, which is actually really interesting. How much English can the average local in your area speak. I've also heard that a YouTuber can become very popular with English-speaking audiences, but remain unheard of if they live in a non-English country. Is that true for you? So let's dissect this. First of all, an average local in my area speaking English? Uh, not much. <laughs> a lot of the people that are above the ages of like 35 and 40, which is like the average Russian, uh, usually they cannot speak English, speak English at all. So like my parents, for example, if they watch my videos on this channel, they cannot understand anything that I'm saying, which is a blessing to be honest with you guys. But yeah, if we talk about young young people actually a lot of young people in Russia can speak English now a lot of Russian kids right now actually are pretty good at understanding English speech and English videos so they consume a lot of Western content as well the situation has massively changed since like even 10 years ago so uh, regarding your second question essentially if Western youtubers are well known in Russia yes they are I mean every single person in Russia knows who PewDiePie is people like filthy Frank etc these are like cultural icons okay and everybody pretty much in Russia who has any idea about YouTube YouTube knows these people, but most of, of course, a lot of other Western YouTubers that are massively famous, like somebody, I don't know, like iDubs, H3H3, Vsauce, like th these huge names, actually a lot of Russians would have no idea who those people are. And I assume you're asking if I get recognized and if Russians know me, well actually you wouldn't believe me, but yes, I get recognized in Russia a lot. In my university I get recognized all the time, and actually the place where I got recognized the most was this music festival, we had this music festival called Bol in Russia, in Moscow and they had a lot of great acts in there. Death Grips were actually performing there. And I swear to God, during that day at that festival, like... 50 people came up to me and recognized me. It was crazy. I actually got tired of it. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of Western YouTubers are not well known in Russia and they can be completely, you know, Russians can be completely oblivious to their existence. But of course, people that are more into, you know, Western content, English content, they'll, they'll basically recognize those people. And even I get recognized. So, you know, Russians, they know their stuff. How cold does it get there? How much snow is there on average? Yeah, you know, what can I say? Russia is a cold-ass country. Uh, where I live, in my region, it could easily go up to minus 25, uh, sometimes even minus 30 Celsius, but to be completely honest, it's not reached that in a long time now, because I guess global warming is real. And again, there used to be much, much more snow back in the days. I remember in my childhood as well, there used to be a lot more snow, but nowadays, it's not much. We do still get snow though, like, I, we actually got some two days ago, 22nd of March, it was snowing. You've gotta be kidding me. But yeah, Russia is one cold country, okay? If you're coming over here, you should better you should better gear up and prepare for it. Because there was one French boy that didn't, and it uh, didn't turn out too well for him. Did you hear or see the giant fucking meteor or whatever that crashed near Chelyabinsk in 2013? I did. I did. You know what? In fact, I actually have a video already about this on my channel, so you can check it out. I'll probably, uh, you know, put a card somewhere in here about it. But uh, if you guys are unaware of this, the city that I live in, Chelyabinsk, in 2013 experienced a little meteor exploding in the air above it. Alicia or Meteor from space entered the atmosphere above my city in Chilebinsk and exploded and it basically created like a shockwave which fucked up a lot of stuff. And yeah, I didn't see it because I was actually at home, I was like laying in bed or whatever. But yeah, I heard the explosion and I didn't know what it was. I thought like my, everything in my eyes started like, you know, going like this and I thought like like my entire, my entire apartment building was collapsing or something like that. That's literally what I thought. So yeah, it was scary as shit and it actually cracked 
uh, three windows in my apartment, so uh, the glass literally flew in. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm very lucky that I was n nowhere near the window actually at that moment. But yeah, it was pretty scary. But you know what? I guess I get to say that I uh, saw a literal meteor in real life and experienced a shockwave from a meteor in real life. And you know what? That's also kind of a flex. So you know, I'll rock with it. This question right here is a classic. Why are Russian girls so hot? And uh, you know, guys, this is a topic that is always discussed when Russia comes up. People say that Russia has the most beautiful women of all time. People that say that Ukraine has the most beautiful women of all time. You know what, guys? I don't necessarily agree. Actually, I would say that America has a lot of hot girls. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, okay? I think it comes down to the fact that a lot of people live in a certain country and they see the same types of girls every single day and they feel like they basically want something more exotic, something that's a little bit different. So this is why people from, like, America are very attracted to Russian girls because they don't get to see them that often, I guess, right? And I guess it works a bit of vice versa as well, because I'm a Russian, I see Russian girls every day, and I'm, I'm like, eh. <laughs> and sometimes I think that other countries have more attractive women. I would just say, honestly, Russian women just pay a lot of attention to their, uh, you know, appearance. Like, that's just the way Russian culture is. Russian women always have their makeup on point, always have their hair on point, their outfit on point, everything. In Western culture, I guess, for women, it's, it's more normal to not look all dripped out on all the time, full of face of makeup, right? But in Russia, a girl goes to a grocery store or something and she gets like a full face of makeup and stuff. I think that's just the Russian culture and Russian women always try to appear beautiful, always try to appear well put together. So this is where I guess the stereotype and the idea that Russian girls are the hottest in the world comes from. But, uh... I don't really know. I don't really agree. I think uh, I think every country has attractive women. It just really comes down to your preference. Do you sometimes feel that your Russian vocabulary is damaged by how much time you spend on the English content? For example, not knowing the word on the spot in Russian, but knowing it in English. Oh my god, dude, all the time. All the time. This literally happens every single day, especially when I get drunk. When I get drunk, I think my English actually gets better, and I start using more English words in my speech without even trying. It just happens. I don't know why, but it happens. This happens to me all the time, when I know what the word that I'm trying to say, and I can only remember the English word for it, and I cannot come up with the Russian word for it. So yeah, man, you know, that happens all the time, and it's kind of annoying, but also at the same time, it's kind of a flex, so I'll rock with it. Do they really teach you in school that World War II started in 1941? I think I heard something like that a while back, not sure exactly though. Yeah, I can understand why the misconception comes from, and actually a lot of Russians actually mix, mix this up as well, because to be completely honest, a lot of the people, they're not really good at history. I'm not saying that I'm super great at history and that I know everything, I'm also kind of a noob, but a lot of Russians really don't know their history too well. And here's the thing, at school they don't teach the fact that the World War II started in 1941, but the Great Patriotic War started in 1941, which is the name for the war of the Soviet Union against Hitler, against Nazi Germany, right? It's always studied in the schools in the context of World War II, but also a lot of the attention is usually paid specifically to the Russian campaign, you know, what happened in the Soviet Union. And so usually all the time when we celebrate like Victory Day in Russia, all, all these parades, they always have the texts like on these banners and slogans and stuff that say 1941 till 1945. And I think because of that, due to years of seeing this 1941-1945, the Great Patriotic War war kind of gets mixed up with uh, the second world war as a whole and so this becomes a common mistake people get asked on the street like when did world war ii start and they always say 1941 instead of 1939 because they just associate world war ii with the great patriotic war so no they don't teach at school that the world war ii started in 1941 but it just happens so that in a lot of people's minds it gets mixed up and they think that the world war ii started in 1941 so yeah why do people think russian people are always rich and wealthy my dad is british and I got into an argument with him because he was sure that all Russians are rich and work in the oil industry for some reason. <laughs> I mean, it's actually pretty expected uh, because a lot of Russian corrupt officials that got like busted for corruption back in Russia, uh, they basically moved to the UK. And actually a lot of people that are politically pursued by Putin's regime, they also immigrate to the UK. And a lot of children of like corrupt Russian politicians, a lot of children of Russian business people that are wor that exactly work in these oil industries and gas industries, right? A lot of the kids of those people also study in the UK and reside in the UK, so I guess the UK just has a lot of rich Russians, like the richest Russians move to the UK. <laughs> so I guess this is exactly why your British dad would have the stereotype that Rus all Russians are rich and wealthy, but 
It's really not true, is it? When your average salary is like $300 or something. Yeah, that's not the case. What is mental health treated like in Russia? General public attitude, mental health services, access to therapy, etc. This is a really good question, actually. And uh, you know what? Don't trust my answer for 100% because it's just my point of view. Maybe I don't know something, but I feel like... Mental health is a topic that is very under-discussed in Russia. You see this stuff all the time on like Western social media, on Western TV and music and stuff like that. You know, in the West, huge media personalities always say how it's important to talk about mental health, how it's important to not look down upon people that struggle with mental health and stuff like that. In Russia, I've never seen that happen. Uh, I feel like there's a huge stigma around mental health, and I feel like there's a lot of stigma around it, like, if you have a therapist, and if you go to therapy, that you're messed up in some way, and that uh, people don't want to deal with people that have mental issues and stuff like that, so... Uh, as well as in a lot of things like the Russian army, for example, if you say to them that you have some mental is health issues, they might straight up send you to like the mental hospital. And by mental hospital, I mean a legit asylum for like crazy, crazy people. And also one problem is that even though Russia has public uh, healthcare, therapy in public hospitals is usually pretty bad and doesn't really work. And uh, therapy sessions with private doctors are very, very expensive. And uh, it's only like very wealthy people that can really afford that stuff. So a lot of people just, their mental issues just go untreated. So uh, yeah, the mental health situation in Russia is pretty bad. I would say and uh yeah, I really wish that it would get better. What kind of thing would make you stay in Russia over moving to the West? Uh, this is a great question, and you know what? My answer will be very, very simple. I would say stability. And I mean true stability, because actually the word stability is kind of a meme in Russian politics now, because actually uh, Putin and other uh, people that support Putin, etc., all of his like, party members and stuff, they always say that we need to keep Putin in office to ensure stability in the Russian society, so that like our country doesn't fall apart and gets taken over over by Western liberals, you know, that we need stability and stuff like that. And it's also kind of a meme because what we have right now, it's not stability, it's stagnation. When I'm talking about stability, I mean real stability. Stability is what I'm sure was going to happen in the next 10 years, next five years, when I'm going to, when, when I can be sure about my future in this country. Because right now I feel like I cannot be sure about my future in this country. Like literally the, the Russian ruble just crashed, my savings are going to hell, you know. When you live in Russia, you're never sure of your economics situation, what's gonna happen next, is our country gonna go into crisis again, you never know. Also, you're never sure of what is gonna happen politically, are we gonna just quarrel with even more countries and, uh, you know, basically ruin our relationships with even more countries? Are we gonna actually become even more closed off to the West and to the entire world? So, you know, all those things, but of course, mainly economically, I want economic stability, I want economic growth. Th those are not really things that happen in Russian in Russia right now. For you, what's the most underrated Russian dish or snack and which one would you want your viewers to try out the most? Very good question. Uh, I would say that my favorite underrated Russian snack actually, I don't know why I remember this right now, but uh, it's this snack called uh, the Jewish side dish or the Jewish snack. That's literally the name, it's called Yvriske Zakuske. It's basically just ground garlic, ground cheese, uh, processed cheese, mayonnaise, and also you can add some egg in there. You mix it up and literally that's it. It creates like a very nice cheesy garlicky thing, you can like put it on toast and stuff like that. I love it, it's amazing, it's so easy to make as well. I have actually no idea why it's even called the Jewish snack. Uh, <laughs> like in Israel, they don't eat stuff like that. I think it's actually, uh, I've done a bit of research and I think it's uh, called Forschmak, which is like an actual Jewish dish, but it's made out of fish and this is like a Russian variation of it and it's called the Jewish side dish or the Jewish snack. So uh, don't know if it's even actually Jewish, but it's pretty good, you should try it. But yeah guys, that is pretty much all the questions I selected out and picked out today. I hope you guys did enjoy this video today. I hope you did learn something new today from this video. Hopefully you did find it entertaining. If you guys did enjoy it, you make sure to smash the like on this video. And as well, guys, if you want to support my channel, if you want to support my YouTube stuff, uh, especially throughout these very, very hard times and uh, the Russian currency being completely destroyed, I would gladly appreciate it if you guys would donate your precious dollars, not rubles, which cost nothing. <laughs> To my Patreon link down in the description, you could go over there and donate to it. Also, you get invites to my Discord server. It's a lot of fun. And also, guys, I really, really appreciate it if you help me out. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, thank you for all of your support. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.